So we've created a Figma based toolkit right here where you can uh, go in and try out your design styles and decisions to make better informed decisions. So you will be able to access this. It's called the SharePoint Content Creators Toolkit. It's free to download on our Figma store. And you can utilize this to go through and create assets for any of the aforementioned areas in SharePoint. And we are going to continue to build on this as we go as well. Like any toolkit or template within Figma, we've organized this in a logical manner, included a getting started page and a change log page so you can see what has updated along the way. Just below you will see our components area. Starting with sites and hub logos, we've created two pages or two frames if we're going to use the lingo. We have on the left hand side for each of these the uh, working area. These are frames, descriptions, and formats that you are able to utilize to inject or insert or paste an image so that you can uh, export it. One more thing is just the live reactions or the live preview on the right hand side. It is as simple as creating a very basic shape. So I'm going to put a star in my extended layout banner background image and you will see in real time as I click and drag this out, you will see on the right hand side how this appears. If this logo appears in more than one location, then it will take place across all of these areas. The areas that you should and must uh, edit to have a proper export are those labeled with a green checkbox, right? It says, insert your logo here. This is the asset or the frame that you can export. That is no problem. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to go into my generator. All I have to do to include this as a site logo is go to the necessary frame. So in this case, a site logo, I need to ensure that it's 192 pixels by 64 pixels maximum. So you are able to make this small. Let's see what this looks like in the preview. Ah, okay. Nice. That's pretty nice. I'm going to go with the extended banner, but I can see here that if I were to go with a standard compact or minimal, this purple is conflicting with my primary color and its visibility is quite limited. Yes, you'd want to use in those situations the white version of the logo or a flipped version of the logo. Sometimes Gosh. your company uh, may already have these things defined in their brand guidelines, their brand standards, and that's great. As Brandon's put it in, that looks way better, a lot easier to read, very crisp, high contrast, love to see that. Um, but the extended version, it's white on white, now, technically, the extended, we could use the white logo if we added a background that was very dark mm. as well. So there that is those options possible. there. Yeah. So let's utilize this banner to make sure our white logo pops out. I have a choice here. I had two banners provided for me. First one, there's a white background with a light blue. Um, probably not going to work too well. Otherwise, I have this dark blue. Uh, pattern here with uh, dots. Now, it's not so clear as to what kind of banners I should use, but any uh, words of advice while I import this one into the toolkit? Uh, things or principles that we should be thinking about, Richard? Absolutely. So out. like we talked about, contrast is king. You want to make sure that there is enough contrast between your logo so that it stands out, that's crisp and clean. We talked about that already. Uh, and we're doing that with the dark version. Another good thing you'll want to accommodate for is balance with your logo and the actual background itself. Uh, and last but not least, I've seen here my Hologenix footer. Mm, the gradient was pretty, but it's really conflicting. So this is where you go through that trial and error even before mm -hmm. uploading to SharePoint to fix these issues. I can go back in here and I can change my fill to a white. Oh, well, actually, I don't want a linear gradient at all. I want solid. Now, this always fools me up. Uh, just to point out, when you change fonts to white on a white <laughs> background, whoops, it's gone. Uh, just like having an exporter looking at a PNG or an SVG in a browser, if you don't have the appropriate design tools, it might be off-putting. So uh, let yourself know that that's the case. You can, if you want, 
I add a little bit of a background behind it, like a rectangle, and set it to the back. But you'll see here now that I've added my white. Nice. Now it looks, looks so much better. better. Now we've covered this a little bit before, but you'll see here that when I click into the extended layout background image, I have the exports or we have the export uh, versions already prepared for you. So you can see here that it matches the format in that particular area. All you need to do is click export and then put it in the area on your computer you want. For me, I'm uh, very hard on myself. I always put it in my downloads folder and never clean it up. So there you go. <laughs> I'm going to jump into my sandbox and we're going to apply these logos. Now you may have done this before, but I'm just running through this for individuals who may not have experienced this uh, previously. So in the settings panel on the top right of your screen, scroll down to change the look. And next we're going to click header. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the extended layout selected. I'm going to have my bold theme applied to get that purple that we want. And next I'm going to upload here. It says image, which is uh, a little bit of a uh, confusing, but given the shape, this is our banner, the background image. Okay. So I'm going to click upload and then I'm going to select the file that I want in this case, because it's not transparent and not necessary, not necessary. I'm going to upload JPG and open. Great. It should take effect immediately. So you'll see nice. here the dark blue. Fairly yeah. fast. I like this. The hardest thing that's not been shared so easily across the internet, and this is where the toolkit really shines, is helping you understand aspect ratios and how that impacts your imagery, both on a page and in any associated or paired web parts and layouts. What really you're trying to strive for is this beautiful little square box right in the middle. Your safe area is 1080 by 1080 pixels. This is a really useful tool like this, um, the, the logos, but this one is a bit more centric. There's just one image that mm. you can see how it plays out across the different scenarios. Now, of course, if you're using a hero with five, you're not going to have an eight by three, uh, ratio to, to spec for but we've tried our best to include all the different uh situations that you might find yourself in so you can make better informed decisions so as you can see here i'm playing this around and i'm going to get to that point that i really like okay perfect right here this is what i want this is has a nice jagged line it i don't know whether the shape is coming in or inflecting out it's really quite striking cool once i'm happy with this i'll have to do just like our logos click on the frame and then click export and you can export in PNG or JPEG easily. So let's add that image here. So click the edit button and I'm going to change. Now the beauty thing here is that if you have organizational assets uh, that are already predefined by your design or uh, creative department, great, utilize those first. But in this case, I'm going to be a little bit of a rebel and I'm gonna upload my own image. Shocking. <laughs> So I'm going to upload a JPEG here and I'm going to open. Immediately the image is uploaded and I can see a bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. This is a four by three preview. Okay. When I click add item, it should take immediate effect depending upon my uh, local internet provider speed, of course, <laughs> uh, but you'll see here, beautiful. Now we're going to look at our other areas. Now I'm not going to go too much in depth because quite frankly, once you know how to export and use the toolkit for one thing, you can pretty much master the rest. But just to show you, we have column sizing and scaling included here for both 16 by nine and four by three. So all you have to do here is just insert the images and you can see the real live states on the right hand side. Uh, this scales fairly well, but luckily, in this situation, there are specific pixel uh, dimensions you can provide here. So for one column, 1204 by 667, two columns is 586 by 330, three columns is uh, 380 by 214 pixels, and finally, the one third left 
and the one third right. Uh, so it's one third and a two third. Um, you have 380 by 466 and 792 by 466 respectively. But you will see the one that's a bit of the gotcha is the one third area where it will crop. So uh, please bear in mind uh, when you're creating your assets. So we see, I'm gonna make this really small square uh, right here. So I set this as dead center on the image. And you can see here in my one third, it's dead center. Yeah. Whereas I pull this to the right, all of a sudden, whoop, I'm missing half of my square. So you can play around with this and see how it reacts for you. It's really quite cool. I love doing this. It's almost a... <laughs> yeah, it is kind of neat, eh? Just seeing that <laughs> real time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But the same thing applies when you're happy with it. You can export uh, just to call out the red safe zone and the change this image are sitting on top of the frame and it's locked. So it will not export for you. You don't need to remove mm -hmm. this. Uh, it's just a bit of a call out for you to ensure that this is the, we provided an image by default. So you can see the results immediately, uh, but you can hide, uh, hide that and move on if necessary by clicking the view button. This will not export for your image. That's your great. next one is your image and image gallery web part. So there are uh, no ratios here per se. Uh, they do scale to an aspect ratio of 4.3 or 4 by 3, but you do not have the option to switch it uh, in this particular uh, situation that we've designed for you. Uh, I believe there is the option to do the image gallery of part and select 16 by 9, but for now, our toolkit only includes the 4 by 3. So just like our column sizing, you have the same ability to include uh, whatever you want here. It doesn't have to only be images. It can be shapes and text as well, but again, consider your accessibility uh, requirements. And you can see here on the right hand side, we have the three different sizes in pixels provided for you as well. We have the large image, which is 1920 by 1440, our image medium, which is 1280 by 960, and our small image, which is 640 by 480, respectively. And okay. these benchmarks are specific to out of the box, Microsoft SharePoint web parts. If you have custom galleries, maybe you've invested, created your own, they may be different. So just putting that out there too. These exactly. should work though with your standard that come with SharePoint out of the box. The final thing is our event banners. Now I've started this at the beginning. There is a similarity between pages news pages and event pages because they're .aspx, which is great. However, from a imagery perspective, news and uh, event items are different. And here's why. You'll see on the right hand side, if we scroll in, the banner seems familiar, but when you look at the web parts, the film strip and compact are completely different than news items. So you will want to be able to see how these look before you export them. Uh, and that's why it's not similar to page banners. We've included this here for you as well. Any thoughts? The concept's the here? same. Yeah, like you're saying, Brandon, the concept's the same. Put in your image. It'll give you a nice preview of what that image will look like. For events, they are much smaller. So um, the, they don't necessarily need to have uh, as much detail. So the same idea as like your banners where you could keep them a little more generic. That's what I would do. Um, they're really tiny in the compact view. So it's almost like an icon you'd want. If you it were using is. That it's view. so tiny. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And we've got white text here, but... over it too. So just keep <laughs> that in mind, folks. SharePoint is a big tool, a big app. We all know that. And there's a lot we can do with it. And we are here to help. Um, Brandon and I will be updating uh, these community templates. So uh, keep your eyes peeled to that. We also wanna hear from you. If there's anything you wanna see, Absolutely. tell us, because we would love to maybe go in deep uh, on some of those ideas and concepts as well. And if you would like to share and get a copy of this Figma uh, template we use today, please visit us at uh, our community in Figma. That's at Tutelead. We will provide the link in the chat uh, and in the recording. All you have to do is open this and save a copy. 
right? For those of you who do not have Figma, this is free to use Figma's license. You can sign up and utilize this right away. And again, for those of you who do not use Figma, perhaps it's a governance issue or just availability of applications, we will be providing an export of PDF style for you to utilize as well. Thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you all again soon.